A just released poll of younger Americans shows President Biden leading Donald Trump among registered likely voters. The Harvard Youth Poll shows Biden ahead by eight points with Americans under 30. Among likely voters, Biden's lead expands to 19 points. The poll also finds broad support for a permanent ceasefire in the Israel-Hamas war. Economic concerns remain top of mind for younger voters, and confidence in public institutions continues to decline. Joining us now, John Della Volpe, Director of Polling at the Institute of Politics at Harvard University. John, it's good to have you back on the show. Just pull back on the macro, if you could tell us who was polled. What were you overall looking for? Sure. Thanks so much uh, for having me again, Mika. We talked to 2010 young Americans between the ages of 18 and 29. It was a probability-based sample, including uh, an equal chance of all young Americans, regardless of where they live in the 50 states, to be incorporated into this survey. We've been doing this for 24 years. It's the 47th edition of the survey. All right. So the, I'm just looking at the top line here. The, the first poll that we're going to look at is Biden versus Trump among young voters. How do how do the candidates fare? Yeah, the, the, Mika, if I just take one small step back, the thing about this survey, the thing about those numbers is from the course, from the beginning to this end of the survey, we saw massive seismic mood swings, I'd say. We saw several mm. indications that younger people, as we know, they're angry, they're stressed. They think the country in large part is headed in the wrong direction. They're concerned about the situation in Israel. They're concerned about the economy, cost of living, inflation. But you know what? At the end of the day, you can see that in those numbers. They're voting for Joe Biden. And right now, it's not close. There's been a myth, I think, over the last several weeks, last several months in polling that Donald Trump is making significant inroads here. Um, I'm not sure I'm seeing that. He's pretty consistent, this 37 percent level right now, whether it's yeah. among all voters, registered or likely. And then, uh, you know, that looks good for Biden. But then these next couple of poll um, questions and answers, they, they show maybe potentially some problems for the sitting president. Um, young voters overwhelmingly support a ceasefire in Gaza with the ongoing problem in Israel, Israel with the Israel-Gaza war. Is that, is that risky for the president? Well, listen, anytime there's uh, what younger people have said from the very beginning of this conflict, uh, Mika, is, is they want peace. So you can see overwhelming support for a permanent ceasefire. It's five to one. Every single demographic group, including younger Republicans, are, are, per, per, uh, support a permanent ceasefire. To me, another important thread of this series of questions, and by the way, the, I think the reason these questions remain so relevant today is they're not... I, I didn't write a lot of these questions. These are the questions that younger people are asking of other younger people, our undergraduate students. And what we found was that younger people, yes, they clearly want peace. They clearly want this to end, but they also see the humanity in this, and they have sympathy for both the Palestinian people as well as the Israeli people. They don't necessarily feel the same way about those governments and leaders. There's a big disconnect, but I think the message is they want to stop and they have sympathy mm -hmm. for both people both sets of people. So, John, let's look ahead to the next poll, which is kind of reflective of broader polling on the right track, wrong track. Nearly 60 percent of young Americans believe the country is off on the wrong track. And uh, only 9 percent say things generally are headed in the right direction, with 32 percent saying they are unsure. What all goes into those numbers? I think, Willie, that's that's what happens after 20 years, 15 years of of of, of chaos in this country. From the these young people were born on the aftermath of 9/11, through the recession, through school shootings, opioids, climate, um, white nationalism, the death of George Floyd, the continued chaos. Um, they're angry. They're concerned. Um, I don't blame them. They don't feel like their parents, their politicians, their parties really get them and understand. But again, it's not a direct correlation between that and the sitting president. If it were, Biden would be in a much, um, he would be in a significant hole right now. But instead, among likely voters, he's winning by, I think, 19 points. So let's look at specific issues that concern young voters. Top of the list, just like broadly for Americans, inflation. Health care, housing, gun violence, jobs, really three of those top five fall under the economy. Um, so that is obviously top of mind. It's very expensive right now for a lot of people to live in this country, especially for young people just starting out. 
Yes, and, and I think that is one of the lessons I've really taken away, Willie, from a lot of the focus groups in the town halls. Yeah. My students and I spent a weekend, three days in Michigan recently, and hearing kind of the stress, not just about the day-to-day -day cost of living, but the concern that they may never afford a home, the concern that they they do what they're told to do, they go to college, and they're still concerned about having debt for decades later. So um, this is real concern, the housing something, the housing concerns. We talked a year ago in this poll on this show where we talked about, about a 40% or so of young people are concerned that one day they could be without a home, could be homeless. So these are real economic concerns. I think the economy is certainly doing better for people of my age and of older generations. But our younger people day to day, I think it's impacting them in ways in which we may not fully understand or appreciate from the lens of politics. Uh, John, there's sort of a bonkers gender gap in here. I think that uh, Biden leads Trump uh, among young men by six points and his lead among by young women is 33 points. Um, yes. I, I'm not surprised that how young women feel about uh, Trump versus Biden. But what do you think is going on? You know, what should we take away if there's any more insight you have about the, the relatively low number for young men and the divide? Yeah, th thanks, John. Yeah, th that's one of the other lessons from this poll, right? There, there's two sizes. There's small and extra large. That, that, the gender gap on the female side is extra large. President Biden has held that uh, co the coalition of, of younger women by 33, 35 points, same as it was. But there's clear kind of a drop of support among younger men, younger men of color, younger men who are white, urban, suburban, et cetera. And I think what we need to do, Jen, is appreciate that these are mostly first-time voters. The first time that Trump came onto the public sphere, they were 11, 12, 13 years old. By the time they were in high school, we had COVID, and they were locked in their rooms, missing important um, life events. I think they largely blame that on Democrats. I don't think the economy has been kind to them recently. And while they are not supportive of Biden at this point, I think there's, I think it's going to be critical, critical for Democrats to reach this constituency, listen and understand where their pain and their angst and their concerns are coming from. And then finally, John, um, how young people look and, and their attitudes toward political engagement. Tell us what you found. I think this is really good news, Mika. I was on yeah. the show, uh, you know, last last semester when we released this. Where I was concerned about the number of young people interested in turning out to vote. The thing that makes me most confident about turnout are these three questions here about attitudes. Do young people believe? Their, that political engagement can make a difference. Do they see a difference between the parties? When those numbers turn more positive, we can see larger numbers of people turning out. That's what we saw. It's a similar effect to what we saw in 2020. And currently, it could change, but currently, as we get closer, people are tuning in. And right now, just about as many young people say they will vote in 24 as voted in 20. And we know that was record turnout. And Democrats hmm. are calling for another record, wow. hoping that they'll turn out for the president. Director of polling at the Institute of Politics at Harvard University, John Della Volpe. John, thanks so much as always for bringing these numbers. So fascinating. And Eddie, uh, the overall head to head spread among these young voters, 18 to 29, almost 20 points in favor of Joe Biden. But when you kind of dig down into some of those numbers, they remain skeptical. They remain uncertain of their own futures. Yeah, and I think that skepticism and that uncertainty is a kind of generalized sensibility. Right. It's yeah. the context in which they came of age, right? But I think the key point is what we just talked about, turnout. Remember, it's those young folk that made Wisconsin possible in 2022. Yeah. So we gotta make sure that they get out in large numbers if we're, going to, if we're going to save democracy in this election. Hey everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone, you hit search on the bottom right corner, you type in MSNBC, you click on the MSNBC app, you click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.